Hi and welcome to tonight's Power Hour. I am Jenny, a sport therapist in Hatfield and St Albans Clinics and joining me is Maud and Sophie, osteopaths in Cambridge and St Albans Clinics. And today we're going to talk to you all about different common ankle injuries. So the first one that everyone seems to know about or has potentially suffered with um, are your, we call them the lateral ankle sprains, but most of you know them as just your standard ankle sprains where you have pain to the outside of the ankle. Um, I've seen quite a lot of them in clinic recently. I think with obviously being in lockdown, a lot of people have started to go running. People are doing a lot of road running um, and obviously with like, potholes or uneven surfaces, people are rolling their ankles. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you guys, are you seeing any, any ankles? No, I haven't seen it. Um, I think most of them are then from a history of it. Um, so most people tend to already have kind of this, oh, my ankles are very weak, like they always roll and it's always happening. Um, but what we tend to see is a bit more of the, um, the stronger ones. So sometimes you roll your ankle is a little bit stiff and then you just pass. Uh, when then we come to the clinic, it's a bit more the, the pain that lasts for more days for weeks and things like that and so you might have trained your ligaments on the outside of your foot a bit more than um, just slight achiness so that's what we're checking as well we're checking each ligament to see where is the pain how bad is the ankle pain and how much we can do for you and how much we need to give you as a rehab treatment as well yeah, yeah, I've seen um, a lot of people who have recently taken up running or even taken up hiking, taking their dogs for really, really long walks. Um, some of these people maybe go, well, I found my old running shoes from when I was 25 in the back of the wardrobe and I got them out and these might be famous at about 30 years old. And the person's gait has changed, they may have lost weight, gained weight. And they... Um, uh, they just don't know how to properly run, walk, use their body, um, and the trainers are obviously not helping that situation. So if they need anything which uh, puts them off balance, yeah. Um, think. So just a very quick, I think, anatomy of the outside of the ankle. So you've got um, your ankle complex on the inside, so where your big toe is, you've got a very, very strong ligament called your deltoid ligament. Um, and on the outside um, is three main ligaments. So you've got your ATFL, your CFL, and your PTFL. Now, the outside of your ankle is very unstable. That's why you've got three ligaments to try and keep everything together. But the lateral ankle sprain that we're talking about is where you roll your ankle um, inwards, and that's where you um, pull, stretch, or even kind of rupture any one of these three ligaments. The main one to go is this one called the ATFL. Um, and I think as more kind of touched on it, they can be recurrent problems. So a lot of people come in and say, oh, as a kid, I roll my ankle all the time. Um, I would give it a few days and then it will be back to normal. The thing is with ankles is they love rehab. They love having the right strengthening um, and exercises going through it. If they don't have that and you've maybe rolled your ankle and you've just had like a day or two's rest and then you've just gone back to normal life because it was a small strain, you're going to have recurrent ankle problems. Um, it needs to be rehabbed properly and it can be rehabbed so that it is very strong and it doesn't happen again. It's just doing that, doing that rehab process. Yeah, so with these three ligaments as well, they come, the front one is the first one to come, that's minor injury, and then they go one, two, three, going to the back. And then really bad injury can even cause you some fracture um, as to the side of your foot and things like that. So when you have a really bad one, um, the best thing would be to get it extra as well, make sure that there's no fracture um, through there in the bones around it. Um, but you would usually have some swelling, bruising, and things like that if you have a really bad ankle sprain. It directly swells up. Ankles are like swelling up quite quickly, aren't they? Uh, but that seems to make sure that if you have a rupture ligament, yeah, as you said, really lots of rehab. Otherwise, your ankles are always going to be um, 
unstable and then it's going to keep on rolling, rolling. And that can happen when you just walk along the street. You know, some people saying, like, well, I'm just kind of <laughs> rolling and passing. So really strong rehab can make your life much easier with those, isn't it? Yeah. Sometimes it's really interesting. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that, but you can sometimes see the bruising in line with which ligaments have actually been ruptured. It's quite fascinating to see. As yeah. Um, yeah. I think sometimes patients worry about that because you initially have the bruising over kind of the structures that are damaged, and then it seems to drain down to the bottom of their foot. And then obviously because, as we're going to talk about in a minute, one of the treatments is to elevate your foot, people then start getting it draining into kind of higher up in the ankle or into their calf sometimes, um, which is which is absolutely fine. That is the natural thing um, with obviously following the, the treatments that let's talk about now. So I think the very, very fast one with ankles is they respond really well to the rice. Everyone knows rice. Rest ice compression elevation. Um, so making sure that you get your ice on it, wrap it up so you don't burn yourself. Um, get that swelling down. The main thing with the ankle is we need to really get back full range of movement. Full range of movement is so important in the ankle itself because that allows you to walk normally, go up and down stairs normally, be able to crouch down properly, all kind of the functional things that we need in life really um, so if you have loads of swelling in the ankle you're not going to get your full range of movement back so applying the ice to do that applying it with a bit of compression and also elevation so trying to get it above your heart and that's when you might see some of the bruising and swelling drain but that's fine um, so that's my first tip for trying to help yourself out quicker um, Sophie were you going to talk about taping yeah <clears throat> so uh both you and i jenny know how to do taping i don't know if you do too Maud. yeah take that i take the majority of the time ankles feet um just because they respond so nicely to it and um, so the theory of cold taping is so that you pucker up the skin like this and so that you're allowing more fluid flow on the skin so you're allowing that an extra bit of healing but it's also a bit of a mental thing of oh, okay well this it's holding the area it's feeling a bit more secure there's a bit there's something wrapping it up kind of like if you had an ankle brace on so depending on what was wrong with your foot you would obviously tape it in different areas um there's some really nice taping that you can do all the way through the calf along the achilles along along those ligaments just to give you some added support um, as well as to aid in the, in the healing process. It's yeah. taking the load off the ligaments as well a little bit, isn't it? So you're using yeah. the ligaments to support instead of putting that pressure through the injured ligaments. So you're then allowing them a bit more time to recover and to heal uh, before putting too much pressure through it. So that would be at the beginning of it, isn't it? Like at the beginning of your injury. Yeah, I would say this too. For me, there's two different types of taping techniques. That's a lot of T's. Um, you've got the kinesiology taping, so K-tape, which a lot of people know about and they've seen because it's all the lovely bright colorful tape that are on all the athletes in the Olympics or the runners. Um, and this does what Sophie was saying. It tries to lift the skin and then that helps to remove all of the swelling and waste products and bring all of the lovely fresh blood to heal the area. Um, so this is what usually I do anyway in kind of more acute stages, so kind of when it first is happening to help with the recovery. And then what you can do is more of a hard tape. So applying a um, hard tape to help try to support the ankle. This is what I usually do a bit later on. And again, it's more um, to help with rehab, to make the patient feel comfortable and stable. Um, and then this is something that we want to wean off. So if you are maybe a competitive runner or you're playing football, um, it might be worth doing it for a training session or two, more for like a psychological aspect. And then you want to make sure you wean off with any kind of tapes or braces. Um, it's not something that we want to rely on. Um, it's something that is purely there as an aid to help you get stronger, feel more comfortable um, with a view to start to wean off and be able to use everything back normally um, so that you don't have any long-term strength deficits 
um, or a psychological problem, psychological sleep thing with ankles. Um, yeah. it, there are some people that can always get like hooked on it or get a bit addicted to it and they, they just think that taping is the answer and they love taping and they'll use tape every day, all day, especially when they're training um, and they try out different techniques. Um, but it's it's not really necessary if the area has fully healed and fully rehabbed and is, is as strong as it can be. Yeah, and you want your body to be as strong. You don't want, you know, you want your body to support yourself rather than using external aids. And that's where the rehab comes in, isn't it? So there's a lot of stages for rehab. Um, lots of like activation of the muscles around it to try to support support it to try to help with the motion of your of your ankle as well uh, but i think what i like to do as well with rehab it's a lot of balance exercises so just kind of standing on one foot and things like that because when you injure um, a ligament you have what's called proprioception that gets a little bit decreased as well so your proprioception is um, the knowledge of your ligaments and your body knowing where it is in space so that's what helps with balance so when you stand on one feet, if your foot has been injured, you're going to see it's a bit wobbly and you doesn't know where to go and how to adjust to keep your balance. So that's when you have to train and retrain your proprioception. So lots of balance exercises for when you go running in like trails and you have little rocks and lots of holes and bumps, your foot directly knows what to do, where you are in space and how to help you to not fall, not trip and to find its ground on the floor. So that's really important for support. Yeah. So being um, quite rehab-based in what I do at the clinic, um, as I've said before, ankles is one way you really have to follow a protocol and really go right to the end of your rehab, so not stopping early. So as more said, it's a lot of activating your muscles again, getting your range of movement back. It's then doing your balance exercises for your proprioception, so your body's awareness. Um, but also then it needs to be progressed to jumping and hopping um, and change of direction. Your ligaments on the outside of the ankle in particular with this injury allows you to change direction without obviously um, damaging the ankle. So you need to be able to do that to function in everyday life. You need to be able to turn a corner, you need to be able to walk, to run, to go up and down the stairs. So hopping, jumping, change of direction all needs to be completed. Sometimes I think a lot of like the general people that we see in the clinic who's maybe just started to walk the dog, fell down a pothole, rolled their ankle. I think sometimes people don't think they need all of this last, we call it the end stage rehab um, because they're not athletes or they're not going back to a sport. But um, that's, as we keep mentioning, what we need to make sure we achieve so that you're not back in a year's time saying it's happened again and it's actually worse this time and you might need crutches or a boot. Um, but yeah, I would say the lateral ankle sprain is definitely the biggest. The common one, yeah. Yeah, yeah the most common. Perfect. Um, Shall we move on to some of the other less common ones before finishing with one that everyone will want to stay tuned in for. Um, fat pads. I think Sophie, you've had yeah. I've had a few. I've had a few um, bruised heel fat pads. So um, over certain joints in your body, in fact, almost all joints in your body, you have something called a fat pad. Now it's not. Some people take offense when you say you have a fat pad, um, but it's your body has them everywhere. They are meant to be there and you really want them to be there. So it's just a sack basically that just adds a little spongy layer of protection. And especially underneath the foot, you want that fat pad because otherwise it's just gonna be bone and skin straight onto the floor. So that fat pad is actually that nice protective layer and gives it that spongy sort of um, surface. Uh, so I've seen a couple of these which are just bruised. You can bruise them like you can bruise the same thing in your body. Um, you can do this after a lot of exercise, after wearing the wrong type of shoes. I've seen this in a few skiers after ski season just because the salopets are really tight and compact and uh, they don't hold your foot in the way that you normally would do. Um, and it can it can be really quite uncomfortable and you can have this pain when you first when you go from standing to, uh, when you go from sitting to standing rather 
um, you had your foot rested and it feels really nice and then all of a sudden you stand on it and it hurts again. Or you get out of bed first thing in the morning and it feels all good and in bed you don't feel any pain whatsoever when you move your foot around and there's no pain and then you get out of bed and you stand on it and it hurts. It can present like a couple of different things. So I think we're going to be talking about things like um, heel spurs. Um, but it's, it's just with a little bit more investigation, you can figure out if it's that or this. Um, basically, it's just then you, you're just trying to rehab that area so that it doesn't have that bruising type feeling. So you can treat above. Um, above the heel into the foot so you can treat the heel itself. I like to do a lot of acupuncture through there. You can keep them on and respond really nicely to that and as well as do some through the calf as well. Yeah. yeah. That, that presence is all a little bit like a pencil for this, isn't it? The pain just under the foot and that's first thing in the morning when you stand things like that. Those are all typical symptoms of pencil fascia just so that's pain on the bottom of your foot. Uh, that's really uh, so in clinic we learn how to differentiate things to try to tailor the treatment as best as we can to exactly what's happening to your foot um, so that we're testing palpation so when we have a feel of your foot which might create a little bit of pain but it's always for always for a reason and it always has a goal from it um, and then the heel spur you said as well so that's a bit different that's when you have a uh, a bit of a growth of the bone at the back of your of your heel which um, can create some irritation on the surrounding structures as you move your foot as you move your ankle as you use your calf muscles um, I don't know how many times you've seen that I haven't seen it that often in clinic but it is it is pretty common yeah, I see it quite a lot with those that come in thinking that they have like an Achilles tendon problem, mm. um, and actually it's because that they have this this lump on the back of their heel, and it might be because shoes are rubbing quite a lot of the time. I get spring in their shoes, their trainers, and as Sophie says, they've maybe bought out some old trainers. They're all falling apart, um, and they're rubbing. Um, that's usually when I see it, and it's just I think um, Maud kind of you briefly touched on it then. Um, diagnosis is key. What we all are really kind of trained to do as a part of PV is to make sure that we get the accurate diagnosis. If we don't have the accurate diagnosis, the treatment may not be effective. So as we said, you've got your heel spurs, you've got your heel fat pad, you've got your plantar fasciitis, and you've also got your Achilles tendinopathy all within kind of the same area, and some of them can present the same. Um, so it's just making sure, and in the clinic, we've got a lot of different tools that we can do, as Maud says, like hands-on um, testing, but also ultrasound scanning um, to make sure that we really home in on, on what the problem is. Um, but that leads us quite nicely into the Achilles, which is um, the main one to finish off with. Um, and again, this is like your lateral ankle sprain. This is super, super common that we see in the clinic. Um, I've actually just had one now. Um, and they are, I would say they are the most frustrating ones. They're the, they're the ones that patients come in and they've had enough. Like you can tell, like you can tell by the way that they're talking, by how long they've had it, that they just can't get it gone. They, and that's, I think that's purely because of the education behind it. Um, a lot of people don't realize with tendons, they absorb our load, um, but if you overload them, they're not happy. And then to recover from them, you maybe have a, a slight bit of a rest, but you need to reload them properly. I think a lot of the time people come in and um, they've rested them and they're still confused why it's still sore like a month later when they go and walk their dog again. Um, I do see much of these in Cambridge with more and stuff. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's quite a lot in the which is a really common thing. I think as well, people are frustrated because anything in the foot and in the ankle, you use it every second, you know, you're as soon as you're standing up, as soon as you're walking on your foot, if those kind of problems create pain, throughout the day, it's going to be a constant reminder as you walk and as you're using your foot and your weight bearing. So I think that's why it's really frustrating ankles and, and foot and leg problems 
is that it's it's just annoying for everything that you do you're going to feel it in you so you that's why it is really important to get it better and to get through um the specialist that can guide you through the treatment um because as you said tendon you need to overload them but there's a certain way to do it isn't it it's like if you go too hard you regress into it if you go too low you're just not going to advance and get it better so it's, it's really a way of doing it that you need to follow and so sometimes it can take a little bit of time but with the right uh, advice and the right treatment you'll be back on your feet way more faster than if you just try to do it by yourself or resting and then just going on walks so ideally it's having a look and then we can help on differentiating between if it's a tender muscle if it's an overuse if, it, if there's something more like a fat fat a heel spur and then we target the treatment around it and how um, more effective it is um, so I've seen a, quite a lot of ankle injuries after um, people who haven't been exercising much and they may have got to a stage in their life where they've decided that they really want to look after their health and they want to, you know, get in touch with themselves again and they want to get back to being healthy and feel good, especially at a time like this. And so they'll start exercising again. And it's normally at those times where they go, oh, and I'm, I'm really trying now. Before I wasn't doing anything and I wasn't exercising and I was fine. But now that I've actually started exercising and doing something that's good for my body, they then get the injuries. Um, so that's pretty common to see as well. Um, but don't worry, it's just because the body's not quite used to that loading just yet. Yeah. So as we said, usually it's people who maybe have never run before I started to go out running. Um, COVID, loads of people have been going out running. Um, maybe if you were just a weekend runner because you may be traveling to the city to work, um, so you maybe just run on Sunday mornings. Now you've got all of this free time being at home. You're now running three or four times a week. Um, so anything like that, anything where you're kind of increasing your load very quickly, you might start to notice Usually, first of all, you start noticing tightness through the calf and the foot, and then you start noticing that it's stiff in the morning, stiff after rest, so if you're sat down watching TV, um, going to stand up, it's stiff and painful, and then how bad it gets, um, and it can get as bad as it being sore during activity, mm -hmm. so you can't do activity, and I've seen people where it's so bad that they actually can't walk anymore, so they're hobbling, they can't place their heel down onto the floor because it's too sore through their tendon. So I think the main things to look out for with this is how soon into activity is the pain and how do you feel the next morning following activity? Is it a lot more painful? Is it very stiff? Does it take you a while to kind of walk it off before you can go downstairs? that they are problems that is when you really like you've probably left it too long and you should have seen us a week or two ago um but with achilles tendons i think it's just about education it's about making sure that you guys know um what you're doing for the week so what i like to do i don't know about you girls is really talk to patients see what their activity levels are like and what they do how often they do it and trying to come to some sort of um, like activity modification. So maybe taking everything away for a week whilst we start hands-on treatment. Um, and then when start, things start to settle slightly, um, very slowly adding things in. So maybe starting off with a 10 minute walk, see how that feels. And then if that feels good, adding in a bit more walking, adding in a small jog um, and things like that. Otherwise, that's how you get your tendon to adapt to the load and be happy. Or you come in and you have the hands-on treatment, you don't listen to what we say, you go out and you keep doing your runs and it never gets better. Um, but we find that those, well, I find those people that do that, they they don't understand that it's because of the load. Um, so, As you said, it's because of like this change in, in uh, patterns or increased load. But I think as well, when you do um, changing your shoes when you suddenly change as well if you do trail and then um road running things like that that can really change how much pressure goes through the foot on road running it's quite a lot of pressure it's really hard when you go on concrete 
but when you go on trail running, it's a little bit softer. It's the ground, it's the grass, things like that. So that's going to change how much load goes through your foot as well. So it's thinking of that. Have you changed anything through your routine more, uh, increasing or changing shoes, changing areas where you run, your route, your normal route, has it changed, things like that. Everything yeah. can have an impact. Yeah. Another big one that I see that people don't link to it is maybe having a previous injury. Um, oh, we've lost Sophie. Um, so maybe having like um, a knee injury on the other side and you've been overcompensating. Um, a lot of people as well with Achilles problems, I see um, maybe they've been on holiday and they've been wearing flip flops. Yeah. So foot biomechanics, especially if you're naturally flat footed, um, you're putting a lot more load through the tendon. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, oh, we've lost it completely. <laughs> she made um, <laughs> but I think um, we've got a lot of hands-on treatments that we can do, and we're very, very lucky that um, we've got kind of state-of-the-art things with the shockwave. A lot of people are starting to hear about shockwave, um, and obviously we need to couple all of this up with rehab. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's interesting. I think it's in a really interesting area because you can really look into that training, look into how you can help them and then follow them through. It. So I think that's a really nice, nice area. To Hi, Sophie. Sorry, guys. The internet just cut out. Sorry. It's okay. Yeah, I agree. It's nice to, again, repeat what we said as a whole. So that really kind of brings everything together, looking at how often they run, what services they run, what are their shoes, what's their um, kind of training schedule. So we're, we're bringing everything together instead of just saying, you've got an Achilles problem, let's just do some massage for your calf. Like, that's not going to cut it with those and, kind of things. Yeah, and actually, as a osteopath, uh, as you said, we would look at the knee, the hip, the lower back. So we would look at that whole chain through uh, your lower limb and make sure that if your hip, for example, has a problem or restriction or something like that, it's going to change the load that you put through your foot, through your leg. Um, so we would really look globally at your body, which then becomes really interesting. And then that becomes as well a long term thing that we can help it never come back rather than have it coming every time you try to increase your load. So, yeah. Okay. Good one. <laughs> Now, I think all that's left to say is, if you have noticed that you have added extra things into your exercise regime, if you've noticed you've been doing a lot more walking, if you think you have flat feet, anything like that, or any sort of pain in the foot or ankle area, um, have a little look at some of the um, blogs on our website um, and some of our educational videos with some exercises. Um, I will post the link below. Um, if you still have any more problems or questions or you want to investigate any of this further, then um, you can book in with us guys and hopefully we'll be able to get to the bottom of your issues. Lovely. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> um, we will see you next week for back injuries. Back injuries. Okay. See you. Bye. Bye.